Ranger files $2 billion defamation lawsuit. Climate activist wants Exxon CEO gone. And goat thieves strike in Babies. Welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. Before we begin, do you have something important you want to leak without revealing your identity? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Now for tonight's news. Granger has filed a more than $2 billion defamation lawsuit against Kit Nascimento, Starbrook News, Kai Cho News, and the Guyana Times. The lawsuit is in response to the series of letters written by Nascimento and published in the three newspapers last year just after the elections. The letter attacked Granger's handling of the issues surrounding the big rig of 2020 and the aftermath. Among the reliefs being sought by Granger are a retraction and apology, a number of injunctions against the republishing of the letters or repeating the statements made in them, and the permanent removal of the offending letters from the online edition of the newspapers. Well, at least we know the PPP and the PNC are united in their hatred of free speech. Climate activists are looking to get rid of Exxon CEO Darren Ward and its lead independent director, Kenneth Fraser, at this month's shareholder meeting. Both Exxon officials will be up for re-election, so environmental groups from around the world have come together to absolutely bombard BlackRock Incorporated and Vanguard Group, two of ExxonMobil's biggest shareholders with over 10,000 emails and hundreds of calls urging them to give Woods and Fraser the boot. They want the two gone because they are basically trying to drag Exxon into the 21st century by replacing enough of their board members. Since last year, activist hedge fund Engine No. 1 has been slowly fighting for shareholder control of the company in order to force it to embrace a more climate-friendly agenda. Since last year, they've replaced 4 out of the 12 directors and now they're gunning for the other 8. Since the fight to control began, Exxon has made vague promises about cleaning up their act and improving shareholder returns. But the promises are only comforts to fools, especially for these environmentalists who have decided to fight the polluters by buying them out. While it's unclear what a climate-friendly Exxon would look like, it's obvious that such a move would have implications for their project here, which at this point is projected to become their most active and most profitable operation of this decade. In other oil news, India is interested in formalizing a long-term contract for the purchase of our nation's crude oil. While various foreign news agencies have reported that negotiations between the two nations are ongoing, in this respect, there has been no announcement from the government here, because you know the government doesn't like to announce anything to us. Last week, Reuters reported Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat as stating that India has expressed interest in buying one of the one million barrel cargoes that the government is entitled to in order to test the crude in its refineries. Yesterday, the wife of one gold miner stabbed him to death at their home. Damien George of Barometer Northwest District was stabbed in the side of the head by his wife. She reportedly fled the scene after the incident. His body was later discovered by a neighbor, and his wife has since been arrested and is awaiting charges. What are you getting your mother for Mother's Day? Here's an idea. Get her a smartphone from Cellular Plus. Get a whopping 50% off the DL3 Pro for $9,750 or Pro Plus for just $13,750. These come with a free 30-day digital bundle plan. Get this deal in the City Mall, Starbucks Square, Massey Providence, and Massey Turkine. Don't miss out! On Wednesday, the police announced that they raided another weed farm in Abini, Upper Burbies River. Some 600 pounds of processed cannabis, along with 10,000 plants worth $680 million, were destroyed by fire. Police came under fire at the first farm and later located an abandoned shotgun on the premises. There were six motorcycles and a wooden boat which was left abandoned, which someone claimed was owned by the Tushau of Sun Hills. So the cops went over to his house and busted him for not renewing his gun license. No, not for the weed, but for not renewing his gun license, even though he had explained to them that he couldn't make it because of the Rona and his age, so he really was not able to go into town in order to renew it after it expired last year. Anyway, 
According to Ghana Daily News, the two shall, while he was arrested, he was not officially booked or even bailed. His relatives actually threatened to expose the police yesterday for harassment and failing to return volleyballs, including the Mons Gold Chain. The protesting sugar workers are expected to receive payments as early as tomorrow. This is two weeks after the government's promise to give the workers $200 million. The Minister of Agriculture confirmed that the government has since released the money to Guy Suko. He said, too, that workers will be paid at the weekend starting from Friday. So, good for you, sugar workers. Enjoy your money. On Wednesday, one of the five escapees from the Sapphire Holding Center was recaptured in a house in Bushlot, West Coast, Babies. The 17-year-old boy was found after police searched the home. Investigators said Thursday's recapture means that only one other juvenile escapee is still on the run. Three others had been recaptured shortly after they escaped on April 22, 2021. This morning, police located the party of 46-year-old Sheldon Henry at Company Road, Buxton. The man's partially decomposed body was found around 9 a.m. According to his family, he was last seen alive on Tuesday. No marks of violence were seen on the man's body. Nevertheless, an investigation is ongoing. Are you a truck owner that is losing money due to downtime while you wait for your parts to be imported? Now that's just stupid. Truck parts are already in Guyana at Powered Automotive Truck Spares and Engine Parts. They stock spares for DAF, Bedford TM, International Freight Liners, and Cummins Engines. Check them out at 1161 EE Eccles or what's up them at 6970171. Tell them Noriko sent you and get a discount. It's now time for today's Runner Report. Today, the nation recorded 128 new cases. There are now 310 persons dead, with 16 persons in the ICU, 1,745 persons in home isolation. The total number of known cases in the nation now stands at 13,957. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Do you own a business that is struggling to get exposure? Your ad could be right here. Email guyamazo at gmail.com to find out how. Now back to the owner. The health ministry reports that as of Wednesday, 31% of the adult population have received their first job of vaccines. For persons 60 years and older, 61.3% have already received their first dose, a number they hope to increase to 80% in the coming days. For those persons in the 40 years to 59 years category, 28.6% received their first dose, while 20.9% received their first job in the 18 to 39 years category. The health ministry noticed that many of the persons being hospitalized with serious complications and those who died over the last couple of months emerged from the 40 years to 59 years category, thus further necessitating the need for the vaccine. And now for our stupid news of the day. The subject of today's stupid news are these suspected goat thieves that went viral on Facebook. They were seen stealing two goats, which were placed into a silver grey Toyota Allion motor car bearing the license plate number PTT171. Just in case you see it, maybe you can stop them. At least one of the goat thieves was seen clearly snatching two goats up by the ears and throwing them into the awaiting car nearby. According to Kaijo News, this is only the latest in reported goat nappings in recent weeks. Early last month, two men were arrested under suspicion of stealing goats from a farmer in Babis. Unfortunately, they had found no goats in the intercepted car and were forced to let the persons go. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is this 2009 Toyota Allion. It comes with push button start, fog lamps, mag rims, new tires, CD, stereo, reverse camera, and much more. Buy cash for $2.75 million or pay it down as low as $550,000 with around $62,000 monthly for four years and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rowe Street, Queenstown or Lot 2 Lamar Street and tell them the Rico sent you for this sweet deal. Moving on to our uncut news views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. 
So, you give your sponsors in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, what sort of penalties should be put into place for business persons and the politicians who allow them to destroy public spaces for their own personal gain? Jay Jiram said, the businessmen should be made to pay for breaking the law, and politicians should be expelled from ever being in government. Aminotep Amun said, a hefty fine and possible jail time should do it, but the nation's laws need to be updated, and the RDCs and NDCs should be more proactive in their communities. So for tonight's question, how do you feel about Granger's lawsuit? Do you think he's wrong, or is he right, or is he just demanding too much? I mean, it's two billion dollars after all. Anyway, think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Friday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Eric Opel for saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!